hello, nerds. Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom, the twice weekly show where we talk about everything that's happening all across the nerddom from movies, games, music, TV, all of the things and everything in between. This week is kind of chock full of stuff, so let's hit up the intro real quick, shall we? So we're going to, in the housekeeping section for this episode, we're going to touch on, there were a few deaths uh, over the last week that kind of really suck. Uh, Aaron Eisenberg, I believe is the name of the Star Trek actor that passed at the age of 50, which seems super freaking young. And then Sid Haig passed just a few days ago. Uh, for those that don't know that name, you definitely know him as Captain Spaulding in Rob Zombie's uh, House of a Thousand Corpses trilogy. So House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, and now Three from Hell, which just is going back into theaters in, in October, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's difficult for me to know where to put when de where to put the news when deaths are part of the news and since these two deaths are i mean i'm a i'm I, i'm a bit of a trekkie i'm not the biggest trekkie but definitely was a fan of sid haig uh, captain spaulding is easily my favorite thing about at least the first two movies i have yet to see three from hell um but it, it, odds are gonna be the same story there captain spaulding is just one of my favorite creations of rob zombie for sure and only got brought to screen because sid haig is so awesome and then you go back through his catalog and you see all of the incredible stuff that he was a part of throughout his career and it's just sad and death happens though sid haig was 80 years old so he had a pretty good wrong pretty good run sorry words um, but still, 80, he still, we still could have gotten 20 years out of him or something, you know what I mean? So, just kind of a bummer. Um, yeah, I mean, I know there's, there's plenty other passings that we, that, that, that those are just the two that I feel like are, are the more, the more important to the nerd community, as far as I see it, at least. So, that is, I think that's how we might be dealing with passings as we go forward um but now let's hit into the more uplifting side of things and we're going to talk about the news and we're starting in music like we always do we only have two pieces to really talk about in music this week first off is our first look finally at stevie t in drag dragon force uh they did release a new video just a couple days ago for the song Razorblade meltdown from their extreme power metal record that's coming out um and we there's only a brief brief glimpse of stevie t in the video but he is in the video if you watch and it's animated so i i could be misreading what the end because the animation isn't super detailed but it definitely it, there's a definite resemblance to stevie t in the video for again for a very brief second the video is hilarious the song is exactly what you would expect out of dragon force and actually the lead vocalist on this song i feel like maybe is coming into it finally three records into his uh, stint with the band but i don't know it this one bugged me less, I feel like, as far as vocals go. Uh, the rest of it, though, is is exactly what you want out of uh, Sam Totem and Herman Lee. So, yes, please, more, and, and let's get a little Stevie T in there next time. A little more Stevie T in there next time. Uh, so, just a, that, it's just a real awesome thing. Again, I really like Dragon Force, but I wouldn't talk about him as much if the Stevie T thing wasn't happening because he's... A fellow, I, I don't know if I could put myself in the same uh, level of YouTuber, but he is also a YouTuber, so I think it's kind of cool to get to, to see the community becoming more legitimized. Anyway, uh, the other piece of music news that we have is something a little bit more serious and something my heart actually yearns for a little bit more, and that is Mudvayne. So back in 2016, 
on the, I believe it was the band's Facebook page, though it could have been the their official website. I can't remember exactly which, but there was a tease that there might be a reunion in sometime in 2000 teens somewhere. Well, we are in 2019, which is the last of the teens, and there's still no official word as to whether or not this is going to happen. And recently, Chad Gray, the lead singer for Mudvayne, also the lead singer for the band Hell Yeah, was was in an interview. Uh, I can't remember what the podcast was, something black, something, uh, because, you know, metal is dark. But uh, they're talking to Chad about a potential Mudvayne reunion. And Chad said in the interview that it's not likely. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely paraphrasing. If you want to go check it out, then follow the link in the description. There is plenty uh, in the interview to to analyze and discuss, but the parts that I cared the most about were the Mudvayne parts. And he said it's not likely to happen. He is still on tour with Hell Yeah for their new record, and he feels like he's carrying some sort of torch for Vinnie Paul, which seems a little weird. Being a, I don't know, it, it just, it seems out of place. Chad, I understand Chad Gray is very much influenced and was very much, uh, 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 Vinny was like a, like a father figure almost to Chad, but he's not carrying the, the, the Pantera torch. And that's kind of what Vinny was trying to do with Hell Yeah, but not, I don't know. I don't know. It's just... It seems a little convoluted. It seems a little bit like Chad's just looking for an excuse to not do Mudvayne stuff. That's kind of my take on it. What do you guys think? Do you think Chad's got a legitimate reason for not wanting to do a Mudvayne reunion? Because it sounds like the rest of the guys... Well, and the rest of the guys have their other projects, too. I think everyone except... No, all three of the other guys in Mudvayne have other projects going on. So, I mean... Yeah. It's six one way, half a dozen the other. At least they're all working still, right? Eh, we're going to move on. Now, let's talk about some things happening in the world of television. Uh, to start things off, we are talking about Crisis on Infinite Earths. And there's a couple of... So we got the official 100% confirmation Tom Welling's going to be in Crisis. We talked about that in the last episode. Now we have a confirmation... That we're going to be seeing Erica Durance, I believe is Durance, maybe uh, the 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 lady who played Lois in the Smallville series with Tom Welling is also going to be returning for Crisis on Infinite Earths, and that's kind of cemented the fact that it's going to be the Smallville universe because while we know Tom Welling is going to be in it, we did not know 100% that it was going to be his version of Superman or if they were going to put him in like the Kingdom Come Superman costume or something along well no we already know Routh is going to be kingdom come but still there are a plethora of other supermen that he could have been but it seems like he will be officially reprising his role as the smallville superman it would be which is awesome and then it got fans going well what about lex because michael rosenbaum's kind of awesome well no lex that lex at least will not be making an appearance in the crisis crossover and it's for a fairly good reason i feel like so rosenbaum took to his twitter to kind of squash all of the rumors and to to put put this baby to rest real quick because it seems like cw was just really stringing him along like 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 messing with him they wanted they they got a hold of him they got a hold of him on the day they needed his confirmation, which was kind of strike one, because you don't just come at an actor, hey, I need you to do a thing right now. You got to give them time to consider it. So that was strike one. Strike two was, we don't have a script for you. We don't even have your section of the story decided yet. So we don't know what you're going to be doing on screen. So there's strike two, because Rosenbaum is an actor. I mean, he's... He hasn't done huge, amazing things necessarily. He's done fantastic voice acting stuff, and he was a, an amazing Lex Luthor. 
but I think that's about it. And I'm not, that's not, a, that's not throwing shade. That's just kind of where he is in his career for whatever reason. And, and it's a great place to be. Just, he hasn't done anything like super heavy and I'm, I'm bird walking. So, uh, so that was strike two. And then strike three was, and we're also not going to pay you very much. Uh, maybe we'll pay you scale. He didn't, he didn't go into details about this, the pay. He did say though, that it was basically nothing. So in actor terms, it was probably more than I make in a year just saying that but whatever uh still i i can't fault him and nor should i and nor should we as a community fault him for for them putting him on the spot saying he has to make the decision now without seeing a script without being given time to consider what else he could be doing during that time anything it it just makes sense that he dropped it so that that i i can see where he's coming from on that uh, but yeah, that's what we've got for crisis updates. I feel like that's very likely to be the last or one of the last updates for crisis on infinite earths before we see it this December. Next, we're talking about Walker freaking Texas Ranger. Yes, that's right. Walker Texas Ranger is getting a re reboot. And the only reason we're talking about it on this show is is because friggin' Jared Padalecki has been tapped to play Walker instead of Chuck Norris, which, I don't know, Padalecki's kind of a... I would buy Padalecki as a, uh, uh, as a police officer before I would Chuck Norris, for whatever reason. Uh, so that part I feel like they got right, but it's just weird. It's just weird. Supernatural's coming to an end, and yes, I know uh, the, the whole cast has to find new work, and... Padalecki, really, as much as they were making on Supernatural, they don't necessarily have to work again for the rest of their lives, but whatever. Uh, Jared Padalecki has been tapped to play Walker, and this is going to be produced by CBS Studios, which not to be confused with the CBS channel proper, because it might not be on CBS, though CBS is the front runner likely uh cbs or the cw will be the home of this new show um i don't see it going on cw that doesn't seem to be the direction cw is going cbs makes a whole lot of sense and the other thing to note is this is not slated to go streaming yet because i mean by and large the people who were fans of the original series probably don't stream much tv i'm just i'm just, it's a stereotype but it's probably an accurate stereotype so interesting update there next we're talking about the chilling adventures of sabrina they have officially wrapped filming for section three sections are what they're calling their seasons now over at netflix apparently so they have officially wrapped section three filming at least so we still have a few months worth of production before we get anything as far as an update as to when season three or section three whatever you want to call it will be airing on netflix though we did also get an update that they will be going back into filming production for section four as of october 7th so the big jump between season one and season two and then definitely between season two and season three doesn't seem to be happening between three and four so three and four should be a regular turnaround time instead of this crazy year and a half nonsense whatever uh yeah so exciting news there as well and then one more piece of netflix news we got our first update on season two or section two i don't know netflix is so inconsistent with their terminology we're just going to stick with seasons how about that so we got our first con uh, uh, update on season two for lost in space yes that's right finally we get a little bit of something to 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 <clears throat> we get a little bit of something coming down the pipe from lost in space it has been i feel like it's been almost two years i would have to double check my dates but i feel like it's been almost two years the update comes from the actor who plays Bill robinson uh he says that they have finished filming for season two and that there will be a lot more development of his character specifically his character and the robot which is kind of one of the biggest things that came out of season one though not the biggest thing because just go watch season one you'll see you'll see what i mean just kind of the whole thing is a big deal so check that out that's what we've got for tv we're moving next into movie news and movie news it's happening in the news as well as in retail we're starting 
starting to get Christmas updates even before Halloween starts. Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds, that's right, you heard me, Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds are going to be doing a musical adaptation of Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. I kind of like it, actually, as as dramatic as I made that sound. I'm not opposed to this idea. I feel like Christmas Carol... Uh, <clears throat> I feel like A Christmas Carol is one of those classic stories that can be told a million different ways and still be fresh and still be entertaining and still have something more to add to the conversation if done well. And with Farrell and Reynolds attached to it, it's going to be done well. And I feel like we might get another kind of comedic at, uh, interpretation of it, be, considering who's, in, who's involved. Something along the lines of, like, a Muppets Christmas Carol or something like that. So, I can definitely get behind it. I just kind of wish we wouldn't be getting this stuff before Halloween, but whatever. Uh, it, it has to happen, right? Because if they want to do it, it has to be done by the time Christmas comes around. So, there we go. Uh, next, we got... An interesting rumor surrounding a tweet about the Eternals. Uh, Kumel Nanjiani uh, tweeted a picture with some of his Eternals co-stars, as well as Dan Stevens. Uh, that name should sound familiar to you because Legion is a thing and is very easily one of the best comic book interpretations on television right now because, yes, please, that show freaking rocks. Uh, but yeah, so he tweeted out a picture where Dan Stevens and other Eternals actors are in the frame. And so rumors have been abounding that we are going to be seeing Legion in the Eternals... Uh, which is an interesting combination, though not in a bad way. So if it happens, you potentially heard it here first. But it's, I, I, I don't know if he's going to be Legion or if he's going to be playing uh, a minor role or even just a real quick cameo. It doesn't smell too true that he would be... That, he, that that character exists in the MCU. I feel like Legion was a self-contained narrative and it doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But that's just me and we're moving on. Uh, next, we're talking about the Joker and not the one that's about to come out into in a week, in a, just, just over a week, uh, but Jared Leto's Joker. Jared Leto posted a picture to his Instagram and had no caption aside from a ghost. A ghost emoji and his hair was pink which doesn't lend itself to the Joker but before he played the Joker the first time he did a similar thing and that he made a public appearance with pink hair shortly before it went green so that has lent a lot of fans to say oh maybe Jared Leto is going to be repri reprising his role as Joker and maybe we will be seeing him in uh, a stinger after the credits scene with uh, the, the Birds of Prey movie or something along the maybe it'll be he's gonna be in the Batman maybe the Suicide Squad we don't know yet and my personal take is it's probably not. I feel like this is probably just fans getting a little overzealous because it's all been it's all but been confirmed that Leto is not going to be reprising his role as the Joker. Uh, speaking of the Batman, we got some updates. Uh, first, we got that Jeffrey Wright is in talks to play Commissioner Gordon. Jeffrey Wright, for those that don't know, is from Westworld. He's the 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 host who didn't know he was a host. He was Anthony Hopkins' partner in crime and awesome, awesome. Freaking amazing actor! I this is this is a time when the 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 racial swapping of characters kind of seems to be an organic thing to do because you're in a very heavily populated, uh, uh, overly crowded kind of urban area. It makes sense that there would be uh, the, the police officers that were not white. And if you're going with an actor who can pull off a, a role with this kind of weight, Jeffrey Wright is the dude who's going to do it. Also, 
dealing with the Batman, we got an update that Jonah Hill is in talks to be a villain for the movie. Not that none of the updates, none of the sources that I found said that he's going to be the main villain, though it is Jonah Hill, so he's got kind of the pull from the name, so maybe he'll be the main villain. We don't know who the main villain for the movie is going to be because Reeves did just finish the official script not that long ago, so nothing has leaked out there yet. I, I'm on the fence about Jonah Hill. <laughs> I love I loved the Jeffrey Wright thing. I am really on the fence about Jonah Hill. It really, really, really depends on which villain he's going to be playing. And we're moving on. <laughs> Next, we're talking about Superman. And there is a new rumor about Henry Cavill's Superman. As has kind of been said before, Henry Cavill was not 100% out as Superman at all yet. But this new rumor says that because J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot have signed that deal that we talked about in the last episode, they signed that deal with Warner Brothers, Abrams is looking to cast a younger Superman. Because the theory goes that Superman is not supposed to be older than Batman. It's supposed to be kind of the other way around. Batman's supposed to be a few years older than Superman. So, to Abrams, that means, well, if Robert Pattinson is the Batman, then we need somebody who's not Cavill, because Cavill is significantly older than Pattinson. So, uh, I can see that that logic, that logic kind of makes sense. Um, but... Pattinson's Batman is is set in a past. It's it's an older older being previous years gone by. It's like the 80s or something like that. Uh or the 90s even. That's when Robert Pattinson's Batman is rumored to be taking place. So it would make sense if Pattinson was the younger version of Batman and we had an older Batman cast later, or maybe they stick with Ben Affleck, then that still kind of makes sense that Cavill would be the Superman for the current time, unless they're going to go back in time for Superman movies as well. Who knows? It's the DCEU, which actually, with this rumor, it continues to go on about the DCEU that they will be doing a, quote, soft reboot of the DC Extended Universe. What that means is anybody's freaking guess right now, because there's a million and one things going on over at Warner Brothers that has to do with DC properties. Not the least of which being The Flash, Suicide Squad, it just a plenty is going on that still has elements from the previous, if this rumor is to be believed, previous DCEU, so Margot Robbie as Harley, uh, Jai Courtney as Boomerang, King, or the Captain Boomerang, rather, uh, and... and, and I can't remember the dude's name that's going to be whatever. So we have we have ties to that previous DCEU. So it would be a soft reboot because some of the characters would be recast. Maybe that's what that means. I don't even know. But that's all we have for that, for anything of the DC stuff. Except for an animated movie. We have the official casting announcement for Red Sun. And I'm going to go over some of these because they are significant uh returning as phil Lamar as john stewart which is freaking awesome jason isaacs as superman is kind of to be expected uh diedrich bader is not going to be voicing batman he is though going to be voicing lex luthor which kind of makes a lot more sense than rain wilson i'm kind of i'm, st I'm stoked about that uh the other one the other big one in here and there's plenty. You can check the show notes for a more comprehensive list, but we're just going to go over just a few of these. Uh, the the uh, bigger one is Roger Craig Smith, who did the voice of Batman in the Arkham Origins game, is, going, is coming back as Batman. And Paul Williams, who is kind of a renowned artist in the genre and a musician and so on and so forth, Paul Williams will be coming back, not to be the Penguin like he was in the animated series, but to be Brainiac. That's cool. That's really cool. And that's what we got for movies, guys. Okay, let's talk gaming, because this one kind of has me... It's actually a really funny thing, being as Monday, this past Monday, yesterday, as you're watching this, as I'm posting this, uh, was officially Batman Day. Uh, 
both of our gaming news has to do with Batman. First up is a new Batman game. And actually, we've been keeping tabs on this every time we get news about the new WB Montreal game that may or may not have been Batman and is now being confirmed to be a Batman project. Uh, we've been keeping tabs on it. And according to rumors that we've covered already, this is going to be a game that kind that has something to do with the Court of Owls. And if you remember, we had that weird logo from a few months back. Well, now we have four logos. <laughs> and they're all similar in that they all seem to have something to do with fire. But none of them come from the comic books proper. So your guess is as good as mine as to what is going on with this new game. But we are going to be getting a new game. WB has been teasing this pretty heavily since Batman Day. And, and with one of, one of their tweets being, quote, capture the night with a K, night with a K. Uh, so interesting. Hopefully they've learned their lesson from Arkham Origins and can give us something a little more substantive with this new game. And hopefully we start getting actual sneaks at what the gameplay looks like. Hopefully we can get something more solid that can live up to the Arkham legacy and maybe uh, very likely this won't even have anything to do with the Arkham games in that it won't take place in any sort of variation of the Arkham Asylum but it does still have that DNA and very likely it will still have similar gameplay so crossing our fingers that they can pull it off this time and then the other piece of game and 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 I know there's been all kinds of Final Fantasy stuff I really want to do a reaction video to the Final Fantasy trailer that just came out so that's why we're not talking about it in the news video but uh, the other piece of gaming news is Fortnite, we, we talked about this in the last episode, Fortnite x Batman is happening. It's an event, it's a thing that's going on, and it's live. And so now apparently I've got to go download freaking Fortnite. So next Sunday, very likely, is going to be a Fortnite stream instead of a Mortal Kombat stream because we're between seasons on Mortal Kombat, so it kind of makes sense. Maybe I'll throw a little Apex in there, but still. So things going on in Fortnite that have to do with Batman. They added a Gotham City section to the map, which is kind of freaking cool they uh you can unlock a cat wing glider so it's a cat woman themed glider that coincides with the cat woman skin that you can get from the store there's also a bat uh, they got a few batman skins uh and there's three different challenges inside of uh the game so one of them is to become Catwoman, one of them is to become Batman, and then one of them is to defuse three Joker uh, vials. And you have until October 1st to get all three of these things done. I think if you get all three of them done, maybe that's how you unlock the... I, I was really confused on the details as to what exactly it took to unlock the cat, uh, the cat wing glider, uh, but either you have to do one of those three things or I have to do all three of those three things either way it's Batman and freaking Fortnite and we're gonna do a stream but next we're talking about comic books and in comic books we have more Batman news actually twice on the Batman news for uh, three times even depending on how you look at it first of which we know officially uh, that it's, it's not been a secret that Tom King is leaving before the 100th issue of his run because his plan was to do 100 issues of Batman and now he's going to come up short because he's leaving as of number 85. 85 is his final book. And to replace him is James Tinian the freaking fourth which is potentially my second favorite modern Batman writer. Modern being everything since the aughts. Uh... I, I really, I really, really excited about Tinian coming in and Tony S. Daniel being his artist. Oh my heck. Yes, that is so freaking awesome. I can't, can't even it, it, it convey to you how excited I am about that because really didn't like Tom King's run. Though, and here is point number two in the Batman news for comic books. In issue number 84, Tom King did 
assure us via t his Twitter account that we will be revisiting the button mystery. So the the comedian's button, the smiley face with the blood drip across it from the Watchmen, that kind of tapered off because eh, I'll get to it later because that's kind of how Tom King writes. Eh, I'll put I'll put off what I need to get done until the end of the run and then I'm going to get fired and not be able to finish it. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so we will be revisiting, we won't be concluding, but we will, we will be revisiting the button mystery as of issue 84, so that's pretty freaking awesome. And then our next piece of news has to do with Nightwing, and this also ties into Tom King and, and the end of his run, and, and T uh, Tinian coming in to start his run, because at a Comic-Con... Uh, a bunch of different DC writers had a panel. I can't remember the name of the con. I'll try and look it up again, and, and if I find it again, I'll put it on the screen right about now. Uh, but they were talking about Nightwing and how Nightwing's been in this weird amnesia thing for, like, over a year now, I feel like. He got shot in the head in 2000... at the beginning of 2018, I'm pretty sure that's when that happened. And and it, it, he wasn't Nightwing at all for a while, and then he started going by Rick Grayson instead of Dick Grayson, and strangeness. But now, it has been officially announced as of that convention that in 2020, so very likely the first month or two, so January, February, we will be seeing a proper return of the original Nightwing, a.k.a. Dick Grayson. So the amnesia is going to be going away, presumably and Rick is no more. So, heck yes, I'm behind this 100%. I can't, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. And then back over to more Batman news. Actually, this one is The Joker. We have the announcement of variant covers, and, and I'll, you'll understand why I'm talking about variant covers, because we don't usually talk about that on the show. But the variant covers for The Joker, Year of the Villain, number one, the one-shot book for Joker for this year, the villain event. Uh, the alternate covers are going to be done, uh, two of them at least, are going to be done by Boss Logic. So again, this is kind of the community getting legitimized, and we're talking again, we started the episode with some legitimacy in the YouTuber community, or the nerd community at large, and now we're ending with the nerd community getting legitimized, because Boss Logic, as far as I know, I 100% I, I, I know that he's never done a DC piece before, but as far as I know, he's never done an official piece before. All of his stuff just kind of gets the stamp of approval after the fact this is he was commissioned to do this joker cover and you're looking at at least one of them on the screen right about now and i love it i freaking love it i boss logic is a killer artist and i've been admiring his mortal Kombat pieces for so long that it's kind of awesome that he dis that that dc has finally decided to legitimize his art in that they are sponsoring him in a way and the other piece about this art is if you look really close, and you can go look it up yourself and get closer and see the image, but that Joker kind of looks like the Joker from Injustice 2, which Boss Logic would be super familiar with because, again, Mortal Kombat artist, and he's done all the things, so, st I yeah, that's freaking awesome awesome and that's the end of the episode guys what did i miss what should we talk in the next one let me know in the comments down below if though you want to go deeper into the conversation then jump over to the website generallynerdy.net that is the hub that will take you to all of the things including the patreon patreon.com slash generallynerdy if you want to go there directly that is the place to support the channel more directly and do all of the things and it, it, subscribe like share you know all of the stuff that everybody asks you to do at the end of these these YouTube videos. I'm asking you to do that as well. If you're new to the channel, there is a subscribe button. If you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, then you can click or tap one of those boxes that should be to the left of my face right about now. But before you do, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.